Hi there. In this follow-on to my previous video, I'm going to demonstrate the technique I use to produce glowing effects for lenses, plasma weapons, and Auspex screens. This technique relies on the use of transparent inks. I'm using Veho's transparent line, but a comparable alternative is the Tamiya clear line. Note that the Tamiya clears are alcohol-based, so require a bit more care. Anyways, first, glowing lenses. I start with my basic lens color, in this case Viejo model color lime green. I apply this to the entirety of the lens. Once that dries, I take pure white and put a dot right in the middle of the lens. This defines the brightest point of the effect. Lastly, I mix my transparent paint, one part VMC transparent green, one part VMC transparent yellow, and two parts water. I apply this heavily to the lens until I have trouble making out the white dot in the middle. If the lens is recessed into the model, like in a mask, I apply this wash to the entire area where the light should fall. I then use my brush to wick off excess until I can just see the dot. Leave it to dry, and that's all there is to it. For my Renegade Militia, I used the same technique with different colors. I started with VMC Light Orange, added the dot of white, and washed with a one-to-one -one mix of transparent yellow and water. That's it for the lenses, so on to the screens. For the aspects on the Sergeant, I start with a black base, then paint on my desired pattern using the lime green. Any mistakes can be corrected with black. As with the lenses, I add some point highlights of white. Then, I heavily apply the same wash mix and wick away excess until I can just see the screen. Once this dries, I'm done. The transparent ink tints the whole surface and gives a nice glow emanating from the edges, which will be more apparent after varnishing. Last, plasma guns. For these, I actually use the same color combo as on the Renegade Militia lenses. So I'll start with VMC Light Orange and block in the coils on the plasma gun. This is a tedious process since Light Orange doesn't cover very well, so I may either use a white undercoat in the future or switch to a different color altogether. Anyways, once the base color is blocked in, I highlight all the coils with white. On this old sculpt, the coils are tough to individually highlight, but on newer plastic kits with more regular coil sizing, this is a lot easier. Once the coils are fully highlighted, it's time for the first wash. I mix equal parts VMC transparent yellow and water, and apply a heavy wash to the coils. When applying this wash, I make sure to really fill the housing around the coils, where the glow should naturally be reaching. When that dries, I have a nice, albeit subtle, glow effect, but I want to push this a bit further. So I highlight the coils again with white, but this time only on the very tops of the coils. And then I apply another layer of the same wash as before. After that, I can varnish the model and call it complete. With this method, I don't get the chalky effect of dry brushing, but don't need careful glazing to highlight the coils and produce a glow effect, either. For Tyranid players, this technique could be used to represent bioluminescence, adding a glow effect to details, vents, or eyes. Well, that's all for today, so thanks for watching.